Hey guys, so we are headed about an hour outside of Nashville to help one of our viewers with their Richard? Ford Pinto, what is it called? Cruising wagon. Cruising wagon, it's it's unique. Yeah, so, um, all right, lights uh, turn green, so let's get going. Hello everyone. Uh, today, I have a very interesting video for you. A viewer contacted us and asked us to come help him with a car that he called a Pinto Porthole. I had never heard of such a thing, uh, but here it is in all its glory. This is a very unique car. What is it called? Party wagon? Cruising. Cruising wagon. Um, there were about, what, 5,000 of these made in 78? 5,329. 5,329 made in 1978. And this is one of them. Um, it's quite a survivor, really. It's got, uh, the cruising wagon was basically a car that Ford created to take advantage of the van craze in the late 1970s. If you remember, the vanning craze in the 70s was huge. Everybody was customizing vans. I remember in my uh, hometown, there was actually an entire shop that was set up to customize vans. That's how big this was, and I didn't live in a big town. Um, so what Ford did was they took their wagon and they bolted on these side panels. You can see the, bolt, the screws here. I shouldn't even say bolted, I should say screw. And they added this porthole in the back. If you're, if, if you're not old enough to remember these vans, look up some pictures. Many of them have portholes in the back, the Econoline vans and the GM vans and all that. So Ford did that with this as well. And that's where the name Pinto Porthole comes from. It's got these wheels, these are factory, Pinto Rally wheels, full lug, really awesome. Um, it's got some rust. Not typical of Tennessee, that kind of rust. It's got a hatchback like the wagons had. It's very, very original. I mean, look at this. This is the original, clearly the original weather stripping. Um, the interior's got both green and like a yellow in it. I don't know if that's original or not. Um, this gives you an idea how long this has been sitting. If you guys have seen my, our Chevelle video from Illinois, we ran into the same thing with one of these blue containers just being completely deteriorated. Um, it's got a carburetor, an old carburetor, half taken apart, some emission stuff. We really don't know what we're gonna find with this. Um, we don't know exactly what's wrong. We know that it doesn't turn over. Um, this here, I don't believe this is factory. Uh, in fact, I know it's not. This is a fluorescent light. And that's pretty wild. He's got one here. He's got one in that porthole. He's got a couple of spares. <laughs> uh, all of this was here before, before the owner got the car. So this thing is just, it's awesome. It really is awesome. Here's more of the original color here, like that yellow. And it looks like someone spray painted it this greenish gold is what I can tell. And the reason it was probably painted greenish gold or anything is this. There was probably a dent here and it's the Bondo starting to come out. There's a lot of rust under there. A lot of times when, when people fix uh, rust on a car, they don't get all the rust off. So it just rusts again. Um, body filler does not waterproof anything. So the body filler will lift over time as the rust comes through. And this has a lot of it here. I looked for a date code on the tires. There isn't one. So these tires are older than 2000. Um, there is a way to date these tires that were made before 2000, but off the top of my head, I, I can't remember what it is. So these tires are over 22 years old. This is interesting. This looks like a huge fiberglass patch with a particularly bad spot in the middle. It looks like maybe this had a vinyl roof and the vinyl roof trapped moisture as they always do if the car is stored outside and rusted a hole in the roof. That's my guess. Inside, typical 
pinto type interior with the door panels the back seat is very interesting it's the original fabric of the back seat the whole interior was like that was that pattern back in 78 and then the front seats are not that pattern but they're probably the original seats that have been recovered. The dash is in kind of rough shape. The headliner is in kind of rough shape. But near as we can tell, it's all here. It's all here. We're going to go around to the other side and show you the steering wheel and all that. Okay. This is the uh, steering wheel. What is that? A Pinto emblem in the steering wheel. That's neat. It's got a tack. The Speedo. How many miles on that Speedo? 26. So 126, no doubt. Oh, look what we have here. Oh, wow. Look at that shifter handle. It's fluorescent. We have to get that working. <laughs> if we get nothing else going, we got to get that shifter handle working. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like these people like to have fun, definitely. Oh, yeah, they like to party for sure, for sure. This was this was a party vehicle, no question about it, no question. All right. Under the hood next. Okay. All right, under the hood, it's the uh, typical Pinto four-cylinder. Um, I don't know too much about these, but I've started to do some research on them. Um and uh, this engine actually is supposedly a very good, reliable engine. It's uh, not bad underneath. Not bad, I don't see any rust. The owner has replaced the solenoid and the starter down there and some other electrical stuff, but he tells us it won't turn over. So we're gonna, that's where we're gonna start. This, this negative cable is real bad, but since it's negative, it, it doesn't pose a hazard. And he replaced the positive one. There's no plugs in it. Um, the plugs are here. And they don't look too bad. You know, I've certainly seen worse. Some, some, some oil on them, but not, not too bad. It's got air conditioning. There's the compressor there. I'm gonna have to check if that's seized. Um, the owner told us the engine is not seized, that he's actually cranked it over and he put some oil in the cylinders. So that saves us some time. We don't have to do that. I don't see anything in there, but uh, it's also not super dry. So we'll check that later. It's got a very strange carburetor. I've never seen one like this before, honestly. Um, Let's see, it appears to be free. Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, maybe not, too. It might be stuck. Um, this is interesting. Here's the fuel filter, factory filter. Here's the fuel line. It's got, like, aquarium hose on it, and it's, it's solid as a rock. I mean, this is just, like, made of steel, this line and it's broken off. So we're gonna to have to replace that. The distributor cap is under here, um, if you can barely see it. Now, th this here's the problem with 70s and 80s cars. Everything is packed so tight. Um, you know, that cap is really hard to get to. It's hard to even see. And it's just the way these cars are. This master cap has already been loosened up. Oh boy, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Not good. No, no. Not only is it empty, I mean, this. look at the black stuff in the second. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's real bad. Real bad, unfortunately. I'm surprised, honestly, that the pedal's not stuck. It's got an XL aftermarket coil. Somebody wanted to make this into a race car, I guess. Um, I know a bit about these. Um, I've had one fail on me. I've never had a conventional coil fail on me, but I had one of these fail on me and it wasn't fun in the middle of nowhere. But we'll check all that. 
Um, but I think you get the idea. We've got our work cut out for us today. The goal is to um, figure out what's wrong with the electrical system, get it started, and then we'll take it from there. All right, the first thing I'm gonna check is are there any safe, neutral safety switches under the dash, maybe for the clutch or the brake, because the owner told me that it wouldn't turn over, even with the new starter and the new solenoid. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way first. I don't see anything no. for the clutch. There is some odd wiring here, but no. I don't see anything for the clutch or the brake. I, of course, see the brake light switch, but that's the only one that I see. So... It doesn't appear that there's a neutral safety switch at play here. Which is honestly a little bit odd for 78. Um, I'm surprised there's no neutral safety switch, but makes it easier for us. Okay, we're going to try hooking up the battery and seeing what happens. Looking for the usual, looking for smoke and any, any clicks or anything we might hear. There's nothing. nothing i noticed check this out the trigger for the starter wire is disconnected but that's i'm sure that was just the owner trying to get this to fire using uh i noticed this was here um, this is a manual trigger he was probably connected to that so no biggie there um like let's let's uh, we'll get that out of the way later I'm going to check the headlights, see if we're getting electricity to the wiring harness in the car. Yeah. Yeah. One. Well, the, this one is on. This, the, the switch was actually stuck. Just that one? Uh-huh. Are they still on? This, the, the one that I said was working is still working, yes. All right, the switch is messed up. Problem number one. Oh, crap. Okay, cut. So I got under the car to check the starter wiring before we start messing around. Starter wiring looks good, but, I mean, there's the starter. It's got, like... Three quarters of an inch of clearance between the starter and the cross member. The owner told me when he put it in, he had to jack the engine up. And boy, I can see why. Um, nightmare. Nightmare. But you can see the wiring. Right there. Fords are easy. It's only one wire to the starter, so all good there. Um, but... There's a lot of oil leaks under here. Um, some pretty significant floor rot. It actually looks like plastic on the floor. The catalytic converter is still here. That's pretty cool. Frame is solid. You know, that's the most important thing. And it's solid. Solid all the way back that I can see. So we've got a good starting point. So what I'm gonna try is just to bypass a bunch of electrical stuff in the car. So basically start with the most basic thing to see if the starter is working. And for those of you that saw my Granada video, we were out literally in the middle of nowhere. The solenoid stopped working. So what I did was I just took a piece of battery cable and I jumped the solenoid. Basically, you just jump right across it and that eliminates the ignition switch, it eliminates this wire, it eliminates all kind of a lot of stuff that can cause you problems. So I'm going to touch this, and if the starter's working, the engine should start to spin. Awesome. <laughs> all right, well, that was beautiful. So basically, uh, the starter's great. Uh, the owner did a great job, obviously, and it's a, it's a really good starter. Um, 
So something else is wrong, causing it not to turn over, and we're gonna to start to troubleshoot. Hi guys. So Christina is going to turn the key, and I'm going to see if we're getting voltage to the trigger wire for the solenoid. Thanks for giving me such a tough job. Well, it'll get tougher. <laughs> it'll get tougher. Viewers, remember she said that. So that when we have to pull the starter or something, <laughs> she can't say no. So what I've done is got negative here. This is the trigger wire for the solenoid. So when you turn the key, this wire gets voltage. And what it does is it causes a jump between the battery connection and the starter connection. So essentially it makes these one connection. And this little teeny wire does all that. So when you turn the key, this should get voltage. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just hooked up inside there. And when Christina turns the key, that should change. So go ahead, turn the key. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard, I don't know if I can get it done. Oh, oh, oh I got it. Did it work? It worked, 11.75 volts. That's fantastic. So that's working. So, okay, let's, let's back off the key. We'll try the solenoid itself next. So what this means is that the wiring from the ignition switch to the starter solenoid is good. So what do you think, Christina? Do I have to turn the key again? It was <laughs> so hard the first time. No, I'm, I'm glad that that is what you found because I um, really want to get this going, so. Yeah. All right. So that's a good sign. So on to the next troubleshooting, which will be the solenoid itself. All right. I've got the trigger wire hooked up to the solenoid. So now I'm just going to have Christina turn the key to the start position and see if the engine spins. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, no. Beautiful. Okay. This so, might be a really short will it run. Yeah. I mean, but we didn't. We didn't fix a whole lot. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is, it, it's a couple of possibilities here. It's possible the new solenoid was somehow stuck and me messing with it has, has freed it up. Or we've been playing with the ignition switch inside and maybe the ignition switch is a little funky because it does have way more travel in it than it should. But we'll see. So I just discovered a problem, electrical. I was just going to check if I'm getting spark to the plug. So um, I hooked the battery up and it immediately turns over. Um, so that means this solenoid is stuck. It's stuck on. So even though this solenoid's brand new, it's not working right. It was a minute ago, um, but it's not working right now. I'm gonna try just gently tapping on this thing to see if I'll free it up. You can't slam these things. It's uh, plastic or Bakelite and you can't, you can't hit it very hard. And that did it. That fixed it. Isn't that crazy? For now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this clearly is bad. Yeah. Clearly. Even though it's new. Even though it's new. Right. So that's probably the problem the owner was having. Having He put a brand new solenoid right. in it, and it's bad. Now, luckily, I brought a solenoid with me, and I think it's good. I've never actually used it. I think it's good. So <laughs> That's worst what case, you thought, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Worst case, we're going to swap this out. But I still want to try if it's got... Spark. Spark. Mm -hmm. So... Um, let me take the camera, and why don't you just go inside and turn it over like you were doing? You ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Yep. Turn it over. You mean like I'm starting the car? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything? Nope. Go ahead. Again? No, I don't see anything. Go ahead. One more time. Yep. Nope. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. But the solenoid's working. <laughs> For the moment. Yeah. So. All right. Looking, looking at the distributor cap. It's going to be fun. 
Um, lots of stuff has to come out of the way, but it's mostly vacuum wires. So we're going to take a few pictures, make sure we know where this stuff goes, and then start pulling it out. So we discovered as we started to remove vacuum hoses that this was actually broken. This is the EGR valve, so that would have been a nasty vacuum leak. So we're going to have to fix that. And no, I didn't break it. It so was actually broken. What does that do? The, exhaust, the EGR valve is called exhaust gas recirculation. And what it does is it takes the exhaust, part of the exhaust that's, that's coming from the engine after the cylinder fires and puts it back into the airstream from the carburetor. So it's recycling the exhaust, essentially using the exhaust gas twice, which lowers emissions. Oh, okay. When, what year did they start to have those? I don't think I've seen one before. 73, I think, for GM. Around there, what around 73. Ford? Probably for Ford, too, because these things were federal mandates, mm. these emission standards. Uh -huh. So most of the manufacturers had the same controls at the same time, for the most part. Well, and I think you and I have already talked that, <clears throat> that there's so much on here. <sighs> it might take us an hour to check for all the possible vacuum leaks anyway. It's true. Okay on there? No, it's screws. Okay. Oh, this was loose. Oh, the whole thing is loose. Yeah, that's interesting. The only one side was tight on the cap. The hard side to get at was loose. Okay, I need my flashlight to even see in there. <laughs> yeah, you have it on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, there is a screw in there. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, yeah, I see why it was loose. You need a screwdriver that's... Really long? Yeah, about an inch longer than the one I've got. And without taking all the plug wires off. I'm not sure you can. Oh! How stupid! The coil's not hooked up. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> oh man. See, these are the dumb things that I do. I looked at this earlier. I saw it wasn't connected and just didn't catch in my mind. But now that we're under here, we're going to take a look anyway. We got the cap off, and that rotor is very scored. Mm -hmm. Up above, move the camera up right there. You can't really tell because the flashlight's shining on it, but that rotor's really scored, so we're gonna pull that out. That rotor's been in there a very long time. This cap um, looks decent, but it's real dirty underneath. And the problem we have is that this screw on the cap is crossed, so we're not able to tighten it up. So I'm gonna have to figure something out with that um because i just don't want to keep crossing it in there and maybe the the screw breaks and then we're really in trouble so here's part of the issue with this car this is the screw to the distributor cap i did not know this but ford uses a different size screw on either side of the cap this is the smallest size screw you can't see this on camera but the threads are completely crossed and i'm afraid if I keep screwing this in, it'll snap, and then I'm really in trouble. So I had this, I brought this with me, just it's in my kit. This is a Ford six cylinder distributor. Um, the screw is the same thread, but a lot shorter. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is use this screw in that cap um, and just be able to grab the threads because the threads at the top seem to be okay. The threads at the bottom of the distributor are bad and see how this works. I found another use for the wipes I like. Yeah, this Getting it off gross. really good. This cap is gross. And it's so dirty, it's like it's paint. Mm -hmm. Yet... Inside the cap, it's not so bad. Yeah. It looks pretty, it looks a hundred times better already. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, look, all this stuff he got off. That's, that's good crazy. enough. And now it smells so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. Well, let's see if my new screw works. I'm going to cut here because it's going to take a minute to get in. Okay. It worked. <laughs> the uh, shorter screw bit into the good threads, didn't hit the bad threads, so it's in there tight. Okay. Yay! <laughs> now let's move on. Yes. Okay, here we go. Okay. Distributed caps on, clean, tight, coils hooked up. Let's see if we get spark. And I might get shocked, so don't laugh. No. Is the metal clean enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's clean enough. We're not getting anything. We Do you want to try another one? Plug. Okay. Is it the spark plugs or under or the cap? It's, it's in the ignition somewhere. It's in the ignition somewhere. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, we got 12 volts to the coil. Okay. That's great. That's great. We got 12 volts to the coil. Okay. What's next? Well, it's either the coil, we'll have to test the coil, or the ignition module. So we're gonna to have to test both of those. We've got the uh, replacement coil in. All right, let's see. No. Nothing, no. Let me see if we still get. Where's your spark plug checker? It's over there. But it's not gonna work. We're not getting any spark. Let me see if I get 12 volts here. You do? Yep. Yeah, I think I heard a little something. Huh. So, next move? Yep. The ignition box. Hmm. All right. No. Did you shock yourself? No, there's no no electricity coming through. Oh, I thought I saw you shock yourself. You just jumped. And I, I wish thought, I shocked you, myself. No, it's like when you just jumped when you turned the battery on, I think. No, I wish I shocked myself. Don't say that. That would mean I've got spark. I'd take a shock over changing that ignition box any day. All right, it turns out the ignition module I brought was actually the right one. What confused me was this plug has three wires going in. So mistakenly, I thought that it would have three prongs, and it doesn't. It's got two, which my module has. But bought a new one anyway, since we're at the store. Bought plugs and bought a new solenoid. So next step is get this thing, this ignition box changed. So here is one of the things that happens to these Ford modules is they melt. This is supposed to be an epoxy in here. And they get hot and the epoxy melts away. This doesn't necessarily mean it's shot because I've seen these melted like that and they still work. But this one is particularly bad. So I would be surprised if it's any good. I mean, it is really, really bad. But we'll find out. You identify these by this connector, the color of the connector. See the connector's blue? That's how you identify them. The one we bought is blue. That's what it's supposed to look like. Wow. Before it melts. Now, have they changed it or could that happen again? It can happen again. Oh, they haven't changed it? No, no. Uh, one of the ways you can help avoid this is put some washers, one washer under each mounting tab. It raises it up just a little bit to get some air in there. Um, so that can help. All right, let's try see if we get spark now. Ready? Okay. okay. Ah. Did you see it? Yes. Oh, I didn't. Yes. Oh, I missed it. Yes. You got to come over and see this. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, yeah, we need to, you need to tell everyone what you did as yeah. well. So... 
down here, if you look down in there, um, see that plug that's hanging there? There's three wires. The black wire was not disconnected. It had somehow come out because this plug is completely broken. You can't really tell because you're looking at the good side there, but it's completely broken. So that popped off at some point and that killed the ignition. So I don't know if this is good or bad, your old one's good or bad at this point. I would suspect it's probably bad given how it's melted, but you got spark now. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm putting the plugs back in the Pinto. It's a treat. This last one here is hard even to see. Forget about getting in. But one tip you could use is put a piece of hose on the end and see if you can snake it in with the hose and get it started. And that's what I'm going to try here. No, I really can't get a shot. No, you can't see it, but it, it does appear to be working. Okay. Although, you know, with this battery out, maybe I don't even need the hose. Oh. Because I can get my hand right close to the hole. Okay. Yeah, if I can get this started like this. All right, we're getting ready to try to fire it. Ignition is sorted out. I'm gonna put a little chainsaw gas in right now. I'm just gonna see if I can get it to fire off at all. Is the key on? The key is on. Okay. Let's give this a whirl. Well, that seemed too easy. Yeah, man. <laughs> that seemed too easy. Well, actually, it didn't. Yeah. I mean, we did, you know, work for hours well, and hours. Well, it's not running yet. But it just, I know, normally we have to fine. try a lot of times, right? So yeah. So we finally, finally have spark. And you're smiling again? Yeah. <laughs> it's got spark. Now we're going to hook up the famous funnel fuel line. How's it going under there? Still trying to get it off. Yeah? 90% there. Yeah? You want to tell us what you're doing? Yeah, I'm just connecting the uh, uh, gas tank from the fuel pump because I don't want to pull out. Ow. I don't want to pull out all that stuff. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of tank. And the hose is rock hard. Yeah. So it's presenting me with some challenges. Maybe you should put some glasses on. Yeah. Okay, done. All right. Yes, I should have. Okay, checking the oil. It's a quart low, but it's super clean. Super clean. So that's good. All right. This may take a while to start rolling. It's rolling. All right, this is going to be the first shot of it actually running. Whew. Let me make sure the key's turned. Do I need the key turned? Yes, you do. Okay. You're good. doing this over here because we're still having problems with the solenoid sticking so I'm bypassing the solenoid altogether but I kind of need to be over there we'll see So let's fix that coolant leak. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this in place for the leak. It looks weird because it's the wrong size. It's three quarters and that's all I've got. So I figure if it does leak, I'll just put some vice grips here or something and clamp it down. 
Um, I don't know if the float's working or not. We certainly ran it long enough to fill the bowls and the accelerator pump is not pumping. So I'm just gonna give it a few wraps. If the float is stuck, this'll free it up. All right, let's give that a whirl. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, you might need to lean over, yeah. gas filter or something yeah um, it's all right let me uh, do some investigation here all right <laughs> now I know those of you that are watching have done this a hundred times you have something in your hands you put it down for two seconds and then you can't remember where you put it Looks like we don't need that ignition jump anymore. Yeah. Let's try that again. Okay. That would be nice if we didn't need that anymore. Yeah. I definitely think she ran a little longer than last time. Well, I filled the bowl. So you think the float's still stuck, maybe? Something's going on there. Mm -hmm. It's not getting gas. Gas isn't. Uh, I think it's some or some oil you know burning over next? there. Let's hook the original coil back up. Okay. Let's see if that's shot before we go any further, because we know it starts and runs easy now. Okay. Oh, so the owner um, was sitting in the back of the car. I feel kind of bad now, uh, and he said that that this came shooting out of the back when uh, when we started it. So it definitely looks like there's a mouse house, maybe in there. I don't know. So we'll see. All right, here we go. What I'm going to try to do is get it to run long enough and use engine vacuum to try to blow out the carb. If I can get it to run long enough, I'll show you how to do that. So 
Love it. May have flooded it. Yeah. It's flooded. to do what she was yeah doing. i did oh you did oh, yeah, i didn't see I you did. your hand over it i, did. I didn't have to i used the oh the butterflies you, gotcha okay yep no i i definitely did definitely and it ran quite a while quite a while is the gas empty at the top ah uh, i can't imagine it is that quickly but let's see it would be nice if it was hmm. Pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. It sure would be nice if we ran out of gas. <laughs> Let's try it again and see. All right. So the way it was running, it would run with the throttle plates completely closed, completely. So that means there's a massive vacuum leak somewhere. And I did find the PCV valve is way down here and it plugs into a, almost what looks like a heater hose. I'm not familiar with that at all, but it wasn't plugged in, it was just hanging out. So that wasn't a good thing. There was a hose going to it that had broken. So we plugged that. Um, so now, it, it, that may be it. That may be all of the, uh, the problems we have with vacuum, but we're gonna try to fire it up and see what happens.
All right. Here we go. We're not priming it or anything this time. No. Well, we didn't really, we didn't really give it much choice there. I'm actually encouraged how quickly it started. Yeah, I am too. still have the same problem. Hmm. Oh, actually, wait a minute, you didn't put the gas in here. Well, I asked you and you said you were going to let it do it on its own. Because that's why I quit before, it ran out. Well, that explains it. That explains it. Still trying it, but I think it's gonna, yeah. I'm still gonna be looking until you tell me otherwise. All right. All right. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time. So, guys, I just want to let you know that um, we are going to be in the Leapers Fork um, Christmas Parade and we have a surprise for you. We have an Elvis impersonator that will be uh, with us in the parade. He'll be in the back of the truck. Um, so if you are an Elvis fan, which I hope most of you are, um, be on the lookout for our, um, our Christmas video. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have Elvis there and um, it should be a lot of fun. So that'll be, is that around the middle of December? 
Early December, yeah. Yeah, so look forward to it. Good. Yep, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, so what did you do? Is the key on? Is the, uh, I believe so. It is now. Okay. Okay, so what did you do? So what I did was I found a nut that will fit on the base of the carb where there was one missing. Um, well, it didn't fit. So I took the stud out and used a bolt with a lock washer. And now I've got the bolt holding everything down. The gasket may be shot, so this may not do anything, um, but it's certainly not gonna hurt. So let's give it a try. We'll know if it runs without the throttle plates closed, we'll know that it helped. Didn't do it. It's There's still try. a leak back there. It was worth a try. Um, trying to find out exactly where that leak is, but there's still a leak back there. That old carb's going to need to come off. Mm. Probably. Gotta be looking at that. <laughs> pounds of oil pressure, nice and cool. I've got the fuel pump hooked up. We're gonna to try to see if it works. So I'm priming it right now. I think it's gonna work. What do you think, Richard? Sure? I think it's gonna work. I do too. Yeah, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Everything else has worked out so well today. Yeah, this is, this is a, a good car. I think a little more repairs and I think he's gonna have, clean up the inside. I think it's gonna be a great car for fishing and stuff, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Okay, so we're getting close. Pretty sure that's under the level. All right, All right. let me make sure that the key's on. Yep. The key is now on. Okay, may take a minute to build prime. We don't know if this fuel pump's even gonna work, honestly. But we think it will. But we think it will. Yeah. Some that wire. Hmm. Oh, it's right here. 
Thank you. There you go. Okay. A little bit that maybe let's see if it stays back up on its own. Aww. I hope the pinto does start on its own. Uh, Steve, it seems to be starved. Yeah, it and does. Oh, it darn, out. we both thought it would work. Maybe it's stuck and it'll become unstuck. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> It's not pumping. So, do you think this has got enough pressure though to get that oh, yeah, up there? It's got, it's got plenty of gas in it. Mm. It's in here. No. no. That's not a good sign. Darn it. That sucks. I know. Okay, well, let's try it one There more were time. just so few Sometimes you few really things. gotta rev them. Yeah, there were just so few little things that needed to be fixed. Well, let me try revving it. You remember how many times we've had to rev these things sometimes to get yeah. them to work? Many, many times. Do you want to hook the gas pump back up? No, I want to see if gas comes out of it. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. But I don't want it to hit me in the face. Yeah, I don't want that either. Key's on, right? The key is on. Unfortunately, this thing's lighting up. Yeah, I gotta remember to take that. It's almost a guarantee that I'll forget those in the cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what my third one. Yeah. So we just put our third solenoid in. Let's try this one. Go ahead. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Whoa, maybe that's why this one was in an estate sale. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did she say, Richard? Could you say that again? I'm waiting. No? No. Ah. Oh, oh. What's going on here? Nothing? Alright, this song is crap. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> man! Richard! <laughs> In. going back in all right it's end of day we got this old girl running running really good we've got a carburetor base gasket that needs to be replaced a few other things like the master cylinder but that's all in progress um, what do you think stash ladies and gentlemen for for those of you who are listening Richard and his cohort Christiana are just wonderful people knowledge <laughs> beyond belief I'm so thrilled to see something run that I never thought would ever have the possibility right, of running here you go, again. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was our pleasure. I never thought back in the 80s that I would be feeling really cool for working on a Pinto. 
But I got to tell you, this thing is just awesome. I just love it. It was fun to work on. It's different. Um, I can't wait to see this thing on the road. I really can't. It's so unique. I'm anxious to get it on the road, too. Maybe the next time we can meet up, we can take it for a quick tour. Oh, that'd be great. That would we'll be so that. great. Thank you again. You, you folks are absolutely wonderful. You got it. You got it. All right, so thank you so much. I can't it's been a pleasure. This has been, been a pleasure. super fun day. You look so much better in person than you do on YouTube. <laughs> oh, good. I'll take that as a compliment. All right, thanks, everybody. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'll see you next time. The real deal.